the word of God for advancement. Hallelujah. I see you advance in Jesus' name. I hear the Holy Ghost say, it is time for my people to laugh at the face of the enemy. Hallelujah. Because something is about to break open in your life. The day for rain has come. And like mighty showers, our lives are being flooded. restoration come to you grace is given to you at this hour hallelujah you are rising the strength of God in the ability of God and in the grace of God glory hallelujah and welcome into this online worship service the spirit of God is there with us can somebody shout hallelujah today hallelujah God is faithful God's word will be coming to us through our pastor, God's servant, Reverend Dr. Ifeobuke, on the subject, Understanding Life in the Spirit. But before we preliminary read the scripture, in the book of Job chapter 32, verse 8, But there is a spirit in man, and the breath of the Almighty gives him understanding. Man is the spirit who has a soul and lives in the body. Say, I'm a spirit man, I have a soul, and I live in the body. Hallelujah. Understanding life in the spirit. We are not, we are not physical, we are spirit being. And I believe the word of God coming from God's servant, Reverend Dr. Fabuke, to today. Bring understanding to us that how we can walk and live in the spirit. Hallelujah. Can we rise to our feet? Let us pray. Thank God for the word coming your way today. Thank God for the word. Let's commit God's servant to God's hands. Let's ask God for auction. Let's ask God for grace. Let's ask God that every word he speaks will go forth in the motion of the Spirit and in the power of the Holy Ghost. We are spirit being here on earth. Thank God for the understanding that is coming our way today. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we commit your servant, Reverend Doctor, if you're okay, into your hands. As we speak, as we declare your mind to us today, understanding life in the Spirit. Lord, we thank you for healing. Lord, we thank you for deliverance. Lord, we thank you for salvation. Lord, we thank you for everything good today because the presence of your spirit. Because by your spirit, I sleep at you. We proclaim liberty in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We worship your holy name for miracles and healings. Take all the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Can we actually go with a clap offering? I tell you, God is good. God is wonderful. Hallelujah. Let's welcome the Lord praise as we go in the time of praise and worship today. God be praised. Jesus, we give you all the glory. Thank you for leaving your spirit here with us on earth. Ah, thank you for your spirit that is tabernacled inside of us, causing us to walk in your will and your good pleasures. Father, we bless your name. We give you all the glory. Our life is beautiful because you are in it. We thank you for the walking of your spirit. We thank you for the leading of your spirit. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor.
presence again to learn his word every time we come across God's word we know God is preparing us for something really great that's why this um, movement I find very exciting I want to share with you right now on, uh, understanding life in the spirit it's a critical understanding every believer needs to grasp life in the spirit what is that how do we live that way how do we understand how to function in the spirit now a believer who doesn't understand life in the spirit will never walk in victory and that is why it is critical the place of dominion the place where we're able to exert and express the, the the life of christ comes from this particular understanding so looking at understanding life in the spirit will be what we'll be talking about right now now every society evolves all countries cultures societies they evolve and what that means is that as you go across different countries and different societies what you will come across are different laws different values and a different culture one of the things i've been privileged to see because i do quite a number of traveling i've been able to look at different people in different cultures and i see that in different places they have different values and based on that they have evolved different cultures what is right in one culture may be wrong in another culture the way certain things are expressed in one you find that in another place they are expressed differently i haven't heard that in some places if you're going to say yes and you want to nod your head yes will mean that thing by saying that but in other places that will mean no so different cultures have different um, values and different uh, laws that govern them so everyone in in society will have adapted his ways and his life to the prevailing laws and cultures in that particular place well anybody who is not adapted to the culture of a place or the laws in a place what you find out is that in the secular world there will be people who will be paying a lot of visitation to the penitentiary system so the judicial process will always put them behind bars but for others who are law-abiding they will find that they fit into that society because they understand the values they respect the laws and order and are able to follow that properly now on a, on a, a social scale if you don't understand the social values of a place what happens is that you can be sanctioned socially by people around you they keep their distance from you they will involve you in what they are doing because they expect you to have a particular protocol and ethics in relationship so our values and uh, and culture is really important for the quality of life we need to live now in any country or any society anybody who is born into the place easily grows into the place and will grasp very easily without any stress whatever laws are in a place whatever value systems they have whatever culture they express in a place they will naturally grow up to learn those things and then become a part of the society this is the way man functions so in one place they may have a different value system while in another place it's a completely different thing entirely 
but anybody who is born into that place and has grown up in that particular place will easily understand and function there very very easily now so looking at different cultures the problems will come when you have somebody who is born in one culture raised in that culture and then for some reason the person finds himself living where he was nurtured where he was raised where he was born into to come live in another society a lot of the times these immigrants or people who have left and moved over to another culture they find it very difficult because they have to adapt they have to learn the mannerisms sometimes even their language or behavioral patterns and sometimes a lot of frustration can come because of that but the truth is that if you don't learn the culture of a place you may find that even sometimes your life can be endangered I remember many years ago I had the opportunity of traveling to uh, South Africa I had the conference there to minister in and um, I had to travel there now while I was there I had this occasion where my host took me out and uh, I remember this incident we got to this spot where we had to go across the road and uh, just instinctively the culture of where I've lived all my life came in and uh, when I looked at the road I looked at um, the, 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 the side of the road I, I, I expected that if any vehicle was coming, any car was coming any traffic was moving they would come from that particular side so I looked there and it was completely clear and to me based on where I was coming from I felt the road was not safe for me to just run across and I took a step to do that and thank goodness my host was just beside me and then instinctively he grabbed hold of me and pulled me back and just then I saw a car racing down the opposite direction and he said to me friend what are you doing I said I thought the road was free he said no road's not free you're looking in the wrong direction see because in South Africa they drove on the other side of the road different from where I was coming from and because of that my life literally was endangered you see so if you don't learn the culture of a place if you don't understand the value of a place if you don't know how things work in a place even when you have the right motive you may discover that things may not work out right for you you like in that particular case you can even become endangered and that is why we need to probe very critically understanding life in the spirit the reason is this from the moment you got born again there was a complete transformation in your life two things you became a brand new person and secondly you were translated from where you used to be where you were born into you were born in, in the old adam where you were born into the life you were born into the, the the values you were born into where you were nurtured and where you grew up you've been translated in christ jesus into a completely new world so you need to study that world and you need to study your new identity this is one of the reasons why a lot of believers today are having a lot of struggles in their lives. Because even though they are in Christ Jesus and potentially they are more than conquerors, they are meant to be overcomers, you discover that in life they struggle a lot. That's because they, they have failed to understand and master the new world they have come to live in and then the new identity that they have. So we're going to look at this because it's critical that we understand life in the spirit every believer is meant to function in the spirit and live that way so let's go to second corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 as we study this now paul writes this and he says therefore if any man be in christ this happens at the new birth remember that the time you get born again is when you were not you were, that's not when you were born into this natural world at some point in your journey in this natural world you got to a point where you came across the message of jesus how that he's our redeemer how that he died and because of his death a new life is possible that god can take away all our sins and completely change our world so that event is being born again and that is when this verse begins to be applied to you look at what it says it says therefore if any man be in christ if any man be in christ bible says he's a new creature 
You are a new creature. If you are in Christ Jesus, you are not trying to be a new creature. No, you are right now a new creature. You have a new nature within you. You have a new identity. This is the lot of everyone that is born again. That in Christ Jesus, you are a new creature. God is not trying to make you a new creature. You are already a new creature in Christ Jesus. And Bible says there, old things are passed away. So there were things that were real. They were tangible. You lived in them. They were your values. They were your behavior. They were things that you experienced. But the Bible says that because we are not a new creature, old things are now passed away. In other words, your old life has been completely stripped off you. And today you are a brand new person. It's important that we understand this. And it says, and behold, all things are new. Everything about your life is brand new. So you see, in Christ Jesus... You need to settle down to learn this new life. Because it's a complete new behavior. A new terrain completely. God has taken you from the old into the new. You used to be in the kingdom of darkness. But because you surrender to Jesus, by the power of his blood, you have been made a new creature. You never existed before. In fact, the word new creature there, uh, the, the, the word new... Uh, if, if you study the, the Greek carefully for the words translated new, there are two key words that are translated new. You have neos and you have kainos. Neos is a word that simply means new as in recent. I'll give an example. If, if you buy um, maybe a, a Nissan car, maybe like a Sentra, for example, a Nissan car, you know, you can go back to the shop and buy another one. It will look like the one you bought before, only that it will be new, unused. So the word new means that. It means new like what used to exist. But you see, if you go back to um, looking at that Sentra, if you look at the models that were made like 20 years ago, and you put them side by side with the new Sentras being manufactured now, you will discover that you can hardly tell that it's the same car. Everything has been remodified. It's a completely redesigned. Everything is different. So the word kainos means completely new. So when Bible says you are a new creation, it is used in the sense of kainos. In other words, you are not renovated. You are re completely. You have been completely redesigned by God. So your life is brand new. You are completely different. You need to settle down to learn about this new life and your identity, and how to function in it. And that is what we mean by understanding life in the spirit. Because essentially, when you're born again, you are not called into a life in which you function in the spirit. So this is what God has done for us. We're in a new world, and then we have a, we have a new identity. If you go to the book of James, and uh, we look at chapter 1, James the writer was speaking to believers. If you read uh, the previous verses, Leading up to this verse 21, James was actually speaking to believers. Now, it is strange that he says this statement and he's talking to believers. Look at what he says. He says, wherefore, telling them, he says, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of nothingness. And then he says, receive with meekness the engrafted word of God which is able to save your souls. What is James talking about? We read where Paul wrote that if any man be in Christ Jesus, is a new creature. All things are passed away. In other words, the man is, is actually saved. The old is gone. Everything is brand new. He's a brand new person in a brand new world. But James, if you read it on the surface, it appears that he's contradicting what Paul said. Because here he says, you believer, you're born again, you're in the kingdom of God. He says, you now go and receive the word of God that is able to save you. Does that mean that the believer is not saved? Oh, what is he talking about here? He says, receive the word of God that is able to save your souls. He seems to be referring to the fact that our souls are not saved. But Paul has said, that if you are in Christ Jesus, you are a new creature. All things are passed away. So what is he talking about? You see, this is where the dilemma of many believers have 
actually being. Now, what happens is this. Man is not a very simple uh, entity in the sense that he's complex. There's a portion of man that is known as spirit. There's another dimension of man that is known as the soul. And also another component of man that is known as the body. So man is composed of spirit, soul, and then his body. These three parts make up man. There's a part that is spirit that is the real man. That's the man on the inside. But there's also a part of man that is the soul. And of course, the outward man is the body, the physical body. The one you put your clothes on, the one you take to the bathroom, the one you comb your hair, and all of that, that is the outward man, that's your physical body. Now, when Paul was writing, and he says, if any man be in Christ, is a new creature, basically he was referring to the real man. And the real man is the man inside of this physical body, and that is your spirit. Uh, let me take you along memory lane. When God made Adam, the Bible says that God molded Adam from the dust of the earth. But man was lifeless. And he was lifeless until the point where God transferred something from within himself into man. The Bible says that he breathed into man and then man became a living soul. What did God put inside of man? What God put inside of man is his spirit. He took that dimension of him and created man in his image and put man into that body. And that's when man came alive. When a person dies, it is the spirit that leaves the body and the body falls to the earth. While the real man goes out to be with his maker or where he now belongs. So, there's no confusion between James and Paul. What is going on here is this. When a man is born again, he becomes a new creature. Your spirit man is completely recreated. You become a brand new person. On the other hand, your mind, which is part of your soul, remains the way it has always been. And then your physical body is what it has always been. Because you got born again doesn't mean your complexion will change, or you will grow taller, or your interest in the kind of food you eat will change. No. Those components don't change. What happens is that when you are born again, you have to sit down with the word of God and retrain your mind, and retrain your soul, and then fix your body from illness to healing. And all the good things that God has made available to you. So that is why your spirit must become the dominant part of your life when you're a believer. Because from your spirit, the life of God can begin to dominate your soul and dominate your physical body. This is the key to walking in victory. So James says, you believer, you're born again. You have the life of God in your spirit. You need to take the word of God and now begin to change the configuration of your soul. Your soul is that part of you that houses your emotions, houses your mind, your intellect, your thinking mechanism. A lot of the times we think what is not right for us. We think failure. We think disaster. We accept pain and all of those things. But we need to begin to realize that in Christ Jesus, we are a new creation and everything is over. We're no longer under bondage to darkness. And unless we take the word of God, we will not be able to save our souls from the way it is thinking. So that's what we see here. That as believers, we can take the word of God and use that as a means of retraining our minds. In other words, our souls, our emotions, we should not live by the way we feel. We should not live by emotional makeup. We should live by the word of God. So this is how a believer needs to function. We're talking about life in the spirit. This is the key. Now let me show you a text that will confirm to you that you are no longer where you used to be. Physically speaking, you are probably in the same place you, you've always been. You are still living in the same house you've always lived in. You are, you are probably in the same country you have always grown up, I mean, that you grew up in. All of that, in the realm of the spirit, you have been translated. Now, let's look at the book of Colossians. Paul writes about this. Colossians chapter 1. If you look at verse 13, it talks about what happened to us the day we got born again. The day you surrender to Jesus and said, be the Lord of my life, the power of God broke into your life and did a, a creative work. You became a new creation. Old things were not taken away. No longer can they dominate your life. You are a brand new person. So Paul is giving more insight into the mystery of the new creation. Look at what he says here. In verse 13 of Colossians 1, he says, who has delivered us 
not who will deliver us. If you're born again, you are delivered. The power of darkness has been broken over your life. If you are ignorant, Satan will capitalize on that to keep you in bondage. But the day you realize that you have been delivered, you walk in freedom. It's your new life. You have the right to it. Legally, you are free. The blood of Jesus was paid for you. And now you are delivered. God recreated you completely. So he says, who has, past tense, delivered us from the powers of darkness. I'd like you to declare that over your life and say, God, thank you. Because you have delivered me from the powers of darkness. You know that words, sickness, failure, disasters can no longer rule your life. You have been delivered already. It's your new nature now. You are the delivered one. You are not trying to be delivered. You are delivered already. But as we go on in that verse, look at what it says. It says, who has delivered us from the power of darkness? And then he did something else. He says, he has translated. To translate means to pick something from one place and take to another place. So he says, when you go up on again, two things happen. Number one, the power of darkness was broken over your life. Now today you are free. I speak to every dimension of your life right now. In the name of Jesus, where you are express, expressing any bondage, you are free right now. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be delivered from everything that plagues your life in Jesus' name. It's your right as a believer. It's your new life. You are not trying to enter it. It's yours already. So he delivered us from the powers of darkness. But not only that, Babu says that he has translated us. In other words, he moved us into the kingdom of his dear son. We used to be in the kingdom of darkness. But when we got born again, Bible says he translated us. You are not trying to leave darkness. You have left already. You are now in the kingdom of his dear son. And only the things that belong to that kingdom should come into your life. I believe that anywhere you are, it is what is in your environment that finds its way into your life. That's the way it works. When you begin to recognize this truth, your life will change. As long as you are ignorant, Satan will capitalize on that to make you think that you are in bondage, that you are not yet free, that you need some supernatural help. No, you don't. All help has been given to you already in Christ Jesus. If you begin to declare, I'm free, I'm delivered from darkness, it no longer rules my life, the blood set me free, I'm bought completely, you will discover you will enter into a new place of victory. Oh God, thank you. I feel very strongly in my heart that illnesses are being broken off people today as you listen to this message. The power of God is coming into your life and God is doing surgery in your body. Anywhere you have been, he you have been, you have been ill, the power of God is moving there right now to bring freedom your way. It is your right. Take it now in the name of Jesus and walk in your freedom. You are a new creation. You are in Christ Jesus, not in the place of darkness. You are in Christ. So this is what Jesus has done for us. And I thank God for this new life that we have. Now, um, it is clear that because we are new creation, it means that we need to learn about the new life we have. We need to learn about that. I remember for many years, after I got born again, my life came under very intense oppression of Satan. I kept doing everything to try and come out of it, but I never could get into victory. Until that morning, I remember, I was looking at my Bible when the scriptures opened up to me from Isaiah 54, where he says, you are far from oppression. And I screamed with a loud voice, you mean this is in the Bible? And I began to shout because I now knew that Satan had no business and no right oppressing my life. All things are possible. All things are possible. When I got married, my wife was diagnosed to have three medical conditions, multiple uterine fibroids, endometriosis, and hormonal dysfunction. And these three conditions were telling us, you will never have children naturally. That's what they said to us. Medically speaking, this would be an impossibility without intervention. Three things, multiple uterine fibroids, hormonal dysfunction, and endometriosis. In fact, the gynecologist actually said, he said your, the, 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 the uterus is riddled with fibroid. This meant to us that we will never have children. But thank God, we found the truth of God's word, where he says none shall be barren. As we looked at the word of God and began to rejoice over the word of God, the power of God moved into our lives. 
and without any natural intervention. Today, we have all the children that we need, that we desire, because the word of God is superior to your experiences. A new creation, old things have passed away. If you declare the word, you will come into the experience of the word of God. I bless God because the word works. I'm saying this because the only authentic instrument and place of knowledge about who you are is not how you feel. If you go to your feeling, your feelings will tell you that you are a failure, that you will never make it, that you are ill, that this infirmity will never live your life, that you will never get married. Your experiences, the reports of, uh, of the doctors, everything will tell you this. But you need to know you are a new creation. You have a new life. You need to understand the way it works and how it functions. And that is why the only authentic source that tells you who you are is not how you feel. It's not what somebody tells you. Two things. The word of God and the spirit of God. Babu says that his rod and his staff, they will comfort you. His rod is his word. His staff is his spirit. These are the two instruments that God will use to bring you to who you are and experience your victory. Remember this. You are delivered already. You are a new creation. And you can use your mouth to call the things that be not as though they were. So, know this. That your experience is not authentic. The Bible says the things you see are temporal. That is why you cannot base your life on the things that you see. God's word, what God says about you, that is who you are. You must stand on truth as it is revealed in the word of God. Make the word of God your foundation and make it your life experience. Oh, yes. Now, uh, we're, we're, we're talking about life in the spirit. And um, I want to um, talk to you a little bit about the Holy Spirit. You know, when Jesus left, he told the disciples... Do not leave Jerusalem until you are endued with the Spirit. Why is he so particular about the Spirit? In fact, before he left, he told the disciples, there are many things I, I need to talk to you about. There are many things I want to teach you. There are many things I want to show you. But right now, I cannot do that. However, when I leave, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, he is going to come and he will teach you all things and guide you into all truth. The Holy Spirit of God, He is the guide we have. He is the one that shows us our new life, our new identity. So we need to have a relationship with the Spirit of God. We must cultivate a life with Him. That's what we mean by understanding life in the Spirit. In other words, a life where the Holy Ghost is your teacher, He's your guide, He's navigating you, He's showing you what to do. This is how to walk in victory as a believer. Oh, yes. Now, let me show you a text. If we go to the book of 2 Corinthians and look at chapter 3, this is what Paul says. He says, now the Lord is that spirit. So Jesus is not separate from his spirit. He's one and the same. So if you have the Holy Spirit, you have Jesus in your life already. You have all the Godhead at work in your life. So the Lord, he is that spirit. He is that spirit. That spirit is the Lord. The Lord is that spirit. That spirit is the Lord. We need to know that. So Jesus is not far from you. He's right there, right in you. Now look at what he says. He says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. This is amazing. He says, if the spirit of God is in a place, what you will find there is freedom and liberty. So that means that the presence of the Spirit of God guarantees our liberty. But you know, I'm sure you can recall, people that have the Spirit of God, either in your church or in your environment, yet they're in bondage. Things are not working out right. A few days ago, I heard of a believer who died young. Yet, I knew that he was filled with the Holy Spirit. How did these things happen? Is this scripture wrong? Because it says that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty there. So what is Paul saying here? That the presence of the Spirit of God means that there's liberty there. But we can look around and see people that have the Holy Ghost and they are not at liberty. 
I've seen them before. I just gave you my example. That for, many, for, a, for a while, I was in bondage, oppressed by Satan. At that time, I was born again and I had the Holy Spirit in me. I could pray in tongues. Yet, I was oppressed. How does this happen? It contradicts what the Bible is saying about where the Spirit of the Lord is. There's liberty. There's an understanding we must have. Now, what Paul is saying is this. He says, now the Lord is that Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. That place should be rendered where the Spirit of the Lord is Lord. There is liberty. In other words, it is only where the Spirit of God has taken control. He's in charge. He's directing what happens there. That is where you will find liberty. If he's just there, unrecognized, not followed, not obeyed, you won't find liberty there. In other words, we must develop a life where we live under the supervision of the Spirit, where he is the one that guides our lives. We follow what he teaches us. We come into the understanding he imparts to us. That is when there will be liberty and freedom. And this is possible for everybody. When God gave you the Spirit, his plan is that your life will be under the supervision of the Spirit of God. Not your flesh, not your thinking, but his Spirit. So we see here that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty there. Now let me show you another text. I love this scripture. It's such a foundational scripture for every believer. If you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and I'm going to read from verse 9. Follow closely. Because God is about to open your eyes to another dimension of life. And look at this. He says, it is documented, it is written. What is that? That I has not seen. So this is a dimension that what you see cannot bring you into. And he says, no ears heard. So what you hear naturally cannot be the source of you entering into this. And he says, neither has entered into the heart of man. And he says, the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Everyone born of God, everyone who is a lover of God, God has prepared something important for you. Something amazing. Something that will blow your mind. God has made that ready for you. It is yours by right. But he says, your ordinary eyes can show you. Your ears cannot help you understand it. And neither can your heart grasp it without help. Without help. Let's go on. Next verse, verse 10. He now says, but God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. That is the assignment of the Holy Ghost in us. He's to open our eyes, our ears, and our hearts to actually know the things that God has given to us. That is the key. Wow. What a message by Reverend Dr. Ifeobuke. Understanding life in the spirit. I was blessed by that message. Hope you were too. Father God, we thank you for grace and strength to walk in the truth as we walk and understand life in the spirit. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. For those who have paid their tithe and offering online, let's pray together. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus to stand before you and bring our tithe and our offering. We thank you for the windows of heaven that is open on us. In whatever we lay our answer to, we are blessed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The message, Understanding Life in the Spirit by Reverend Dr. Ephiobuke continues next week. Let's keep walking in the Spirit, living in the Spirit, triumphant in the Spirit. You are blessed. Suddenly, suddenly.